Welcome to the second installment in the Recoma tutorial series. In this video, we're going to download, install and configure Recoma so you can start decomposing your sounds in Reaper. Before we go through the manual process of downloading the files we need and doing the initial setup, it's important to outline how Recoma is structured as a package. There are two layers that make up the Recoma package. First, there is the user facing layer, which comprises the scripts that are executed when you want to process some media items in the arrangement view. If you tuned in for the previous tutorial, you'll have seen me executing scripts by selecting them in the file explorer. This is that layer. On another layer, hidden from you as the user after setup, are the Flicoma command line executables. These executables do the number crunching and audio processing on the media items in the background. The user facing layer communicates with this layer so that Reaper knows where to slice up your audio or what processed audio needs to be added as takes to the source media items. The lifetime of a Reacoma process is as follows. Execute script. The script communicates with the binaries. The binaries return a result and the script updates the Reaper session. Let's start by downloading the Flucoma command line tools. To get them, we're going to head to flucoma.org slash download. Once we're there, you want to download the appropriate command line version for your operating system. I'm running on macOS here, so I'll grab those. Once you've downloaded them, you want to decompress the archive that they're in and find the bin folder. Inside the bin folder, you'll find all the binaries. Later on, we're going to point the user facing rear scripts to the location of the folder containing these binaries. So make sure you put them in a safe place on your hard drive that you can remember. I'm going to copy the bin folder and put it in an easy access location close to my home folder. Now we'll download the user facing scripts from GitHub and put them in a safe place that we can remember. I would encourage you to keep the folder of scripts in the Reaper resource folder, as this place will remain untouched by other parts of your operating system. You can find the Reaper resource folder quickly by going Options, Show Reaper resource path in Finder. This opens the location of the resource folder, and we can then locate the scripts subdirectory where we'll save the folder of rear scripts too. Here I am grabbing the downloaded scripts folder and copying it to this subdirectory. Now that we have both the scripts and the command line tools, we're ready to start executing the scripts on media items that are selected in the arrangement view. I'm going to assume that someone watching this tutorial may have never used a rear script or Reaper action before, and might not be familiar with how to use them. To execute a script, we have to call a specific Reaper action, run lua slash eel script. This can be found by going to the action menu through the menu bar or by hitting the keyboard shortcut for question mark. This is the command here. I recommend that you set a key binding for this action as you will be frequently using it to execute scripts. I have bound it to command shift R and I recommend you set something similar as it will save you a lot of time in the future. Once we execute this Reaper action, we are asked to select which script we would like to run. Each of the scripts are named according to the algorithm that they use. Let's try it out by running fluid hpss.lua, short for harmonic percussive source separation. This will help us to decompose a media item into a harmonic and percussive component. The first time you try and execute one of the scripts, you'll be prompted to provide the folder location of the command line tools. This stage creates a semi-permanent connection between the scripts, Reaper, and the command line executables, and is absolutely essential. You only have to do this once per installation, or until you either move the command line tools or delete them. Even if you upgrade the tools or the script separately, you shouldn't have to go through this process again. I downloaded the command line tools and put them in this folder. Users slash James slash Reacoma hyphen binaries. Once this is done, you'll get a prompt telling you whether or not the location that you provided was valid and contain the tools. Now that we've told Reaper where to find the programs that process audio, we are fully ready to use the tools. 
you'll have noticed that a pop-up menu has appeared. This is common across all of the Rio Coma scripts and is the stage where you set the parameters of each process before they run. Let's just use the default parameters of HPSS to decompose this drum loop into harmonic and percussive components. This concludes the setup and configuration of Rio Coma and this tutorial. The next tutorial is optional and will show you how to set up a panel of GUI buttons to execute the Rio Coma scripts. This might appeal to you if you don't feel comfortable repeatedly navigating the action menu, or if you want something close by to play with the scripts. You're welcome to skip to the next tutorial after this, which will start to go into more detail about the slicing algorithms and their parameters.